So it's Tuesday, normally a day for a tutorial, but as you know, there's only one story we're concerned about right now, and it's the ongoing saga of whether anything of Luna or UST or Terra in general can be salvaged from all of this. Terra is more than UST, says Do Kwon, but is he right? So this, well, this is a pile of garbage. Mmm, yummy. And this kind of accurately represents what UST has become. This we can throw in the bin where it belongs. But where does that leave everything else? Where does that leave Luna, for instance? Well, <laughs> that's in the garbage as well. But there is so much more going on on Terra. There have been builders creating stuff. The chain actually works. And there's all this development going on. People building stuff, developing stuff. A lot of big brains, a lot of big money came into Terra to create DeFi and exchanges and games and all sorts of other things. It predominantly came there because of UST. That token seeded the entire ecosystem. But if you take that token away, what it really is left. So look, it's not just a simple case of a shitcoin collapsing to nothing. We've seen those happen tons of times, but this is an actual blockchain with a bunch of stuff going on. And UST is just one component of it, albeit a very important one. The Terra community is my family. Family, family. Says Doe, let's build it back up again, together. At which point I'm certain you're probably making a face a little something like this. But what you have to remember is that a lot of projects have a lot tied up in this ecosystem and that has all been completely and utterly fucked. They can't just write it off, it's sunk cost fallacy. Or maybe it's just sunk costs in general. Projects like Alice, who were posting a UST point of sale system just 10 days ago, but so many others like Nebula, Mars, Prism, Astroport, Risk Harbor, or Caddo, not to mention all the staking and validator operators like Stata Labs. But also think of the big money VCs and accelerators like Jump, Delphi, Outlier, Longhash, and all the others who are also intertwined with this network. There's a lot at stake, there's a lot of wreckage. And that's why it's maybe not so surprising to see messages like this flooding the timeline this morning. Parodies nuts, the gangster of love, telling it like it is. But what on earth are they all agreeing to? Well, do you remember when Coca-Cola launched New Coke because all the kids back then preferred the taste of Pepsi? It was just sweeter and nicer, the Pepsi test. Pepsi. I passed that one. No, of course you don't because that was 1985 and none of you were even born yet. That includes you, Alp. Ah, uh, Gen Z, I love you. Stop talking, it's not your show. <laughs> it was a spectacular failure, and they brought back the original Coke, now rebranded as Coke Classic, and everybody was happy again. Well, that's what's happening here. Sorta. So yesterday, Do Quan, with his Quan Do approach, posted the Terra Ecosystem Revival Plan 2, which is gonna be put up for vote on the 18th of May. So they're really not hanging around with this. So what is the plan? Well, it looks like this. Firstly, fork the Terra chain into a new chain, but without an algorithmic stablecoin. The old chain will be renamed Terra Classic, with the new chain inheriting the brand Terra and the new native token Luna. Because as Doe rightly says, the Terra brand still has some kind of value, even if it's just to be associated with the worst catastrophe in blockchain history. Now this new Luna will be airdropped across Luna Classic stakers, Luna Classic holders, residual UST holders, and essential app developers of Terra Classic. The Terra Foundation's own wallet will be completely removed from the whitelist to create, as they say, a fully community-owned chain. So then, Terra Classic. Which should basically just die, right? Because why would anyone support it? And now Terra itself is reborn, stripped of the toxic failure UST and free to continue serving as a home to the DApp services and validators who previously set up shop there. On the technical side of things, a pre-attack snapshot will be taken at Terra Classic block 7544914, and then a launch snapshot will be taken at Terra Classic block 7790000. And no, that's not my telephone number. That launch block lands as it turns out, on the 27th of March, so in 10 days' time. 
A billion Luna will be airdropped in total, but there will be vesting schedules and token lockups mandated for much of that Luna as the ecosystem tries to figure out how to function without UST, which via Anchor's 20% earn rate was undoubtedly the single biggest reason why any significant capital came to play on the chain. So Luna and UST holders will receive 10% at Genesis with the remaining vested over two years. So don't expect to be suddenly made whole and liquid from the get-go. Who writes this stuff? So here's a really interesting bit. In the proposal, Doe compares the spectacular unraveling of UST to the ETH DAO hack, which resulted in the now infamous ETH fork and the birth of Ethereum Classic. But while ETC's existence is predicated on absolute immutability, it is in fact one of the dark secrets of the juggernaut we know as ETH today that the chain was rolled back to wipe that hack from its record. So immutability be damned. Now that could have been the end of Ethereum, but it actually probably ended up making the developer community stronger in the end. Now given the strong support signaled by Terra's most prominent voices, but let's be honest here, do they really have much of a choice? It's probably unwise to be too hasty in writing obituaries on Terra just yet, even if UST itself is undeniably done and dusted. And for the good of the space and those who were wiped out by the events of this week, let's hope that it works. And now, Let's hear from our sponsors. Is your crypto sitting idle without earning you any passive income? On Nexo, you can maximize the value of your crypto in no time and earn rates of up to 17%. Their web platform and mobile app are super easy to use. You can buy crypto with your card instantly and start earning interest paid out daily. The Nexo exchange has over 300 market pairs. Every time you swap or buy crypto, you get up to 0.5% cash back that's automatically added to your wallet. If you want to finance buying a car or a trip to a faraway place, you can borrow cash by using your crypto or NFT is collateral. You don't lose your crypto and you can get borrowing rates as low as 0% APR. Nexo has over 4 million users worldwide and their platform is equipped with a top quality security infrastructure designed to ensure maximum protection of assets at all times. Go to nexo.io and get started today. Decentralization of Ethereum gives us security. Layer 2 protocol Arbitrum gives us low-cost transactions. TracerDAO's perpetual pools gives us liquidation-free, long-term leveraged tokens. The combination of all three of these unlocks the full potential of DeFi. Using Tracer, you can take long or short positions with leverage to trade anything, commodities, cryptocurrencies, equities, even NFTs. Dive into perpetual pools at tracer.finance and learn more about this exciting release with The Voyage, a six-week journey in Tracer's perpetual pools to earn TCR rewards and explore the potential. 